Scott Kennedy is a senior China expert at the Center for Strategic and International Studies at Johns Hopkins University. He joins me now from Washington. Uh, Professor Kennedy, first of all, uh, good to see you. Thanks for taking time to speak with me today. Uh, good to be with you. What should we expect from these talks in Washington, and might they have any effect on Canada? Uh, I think we shouldn't expect a whole lot, actually, uh, both sides dancing. Uh, they're pretty far apart. Uh, the Chinese have come in with uh, very modest offers over the past few months. They may increase it slightly, uh, but the U.S. Uh, demands uh, for China with regard not only to purchases but uh, structural changes to industrial policy are still quite high. So I expect after this week we may hear that they've made a little bit of progress but still super far apart. Um, I don't think that there's going to be uh, much progress that's going to be relevant for the involving Huawei. I think that is mostly going to be handled on a separate track. The Chinese say they consider the charges against uh, Meng Wanzhou uh, and Huawei unfounded and uh, part of uh, this American attack on their company by a uh, on, on their economy rather by crippling their most uh, successful high tech firm. How are these two parties going to make any progress at the table with the Chinese side taking that position? Um, I, I agree. That's, it's it's going to be difficult. These are uh, highly contentious issues. Uh, I think the broader Chinese charge is that the U.S. isn't interested in allowing China to be a successful uh, economy, to be more powerful and influential, uh, and in high tech in particular. I don't think that's really accurate. I don't think it's the American uh, goal here. I think really what uh, the United States and others who interact with China are seeking is for China as a government, for Chinese companies to play by the rules uh, that we all agree to. Uh, and that when you don't, uh, you should be punished. And Chinese government should be just as unhappy with Chinese companies that break the rules as everybody else. Uh, and I, I think that's the common standard everyone is, is trying to uh, uh, achieve. Uh, obviously, it's quite contentious when it involves a company like Huawei. That's the equivalent of America's uh, Microsoft. So these, this is are highly contentious. I can understand that. Hopefully, everyone will say, uh, let's let the legal process take its course. Everyone has read the indictments now. You can see these are quite significant charges uh, with some amount of evidence that says that this should get in front of juries to see what the results will be. And so, uh, contentious, uh, but we all have to be adults and, and try and see this through uh, as responsibly as possible. What's the likelihood you think that happens with the Chinese around the table? They've got a, a demonstrated history of, uh, of being unwilling to unlink uh, the, the way they're treated uh, on business issues or legal issues. Uh, they don't separate those two. Sure. I, I mean, I, I, can, I can appreciate that. But I think the Chinese are also practical. The... Um, the negotiations that are going on here in Washington about Chinese economic policy, yes, the United States has taken some un unpolitic measures to get to the table, but China's economic system is most dangerous to China. China's debt is growing, the economy is slowing down, business confidence is, is dragging, and that's not just because of the United States, that's because China's economic model isn't serving their own interests. The U.S. is just calling attention to it. And so they, want, they should want to solve this as much as us. China also wants to be able to participate in the global economy and high-tech space and move up the value-added chain and avoid a middle income trap. And they want their companies to innovate and be successful. And so I think actually we all share the same common interest, uh, even though the specifics of some of these things are, are quite sensitive. And that's why I hope that uh, we will deal with these things in the most diplomatic way possible. You talked a little bit earlier about uh, trying to, to, to deal with uh, the relationship on these two tracks, one uh, involving the, the legal action against uh, Huawei and some of its executives and the trade track. And yesterday, officials from U.S. intelligence agencies told the uh, Congressional Committee there in Washington they considered China to be the biggest espionage threat against the U.S. And uh, we see these very serious charges against uh, Meng Wanzhou and Huawei. Uh, is there any chance, any scenario uh, in which, uh, as President Trump mused a few weeks ago, the American side might reconsider the charges if there's progress made on trade? Um, I suppose 
uh, anything is possible these days in Washington. You, you never know, but I think it's really highly unlikely. The, ch the best chance for uh, taking a different approach with regard to Huawei was last summer when the United States was deciding how to pursue Huawei and whether to pursue them through civil action or criminal actions, uh, which specific areas to focus on. I think once the ball got rolling and the, the indictments were released and the, the, desired, the, the desired issue an arrest warrant, then I think it really is taken away uh, out of the president's hands. And, and particularly since uh, the day before yesterday, I believe, uh, the U.S. formally put forward its request, extradition request, I think at this point it really is in the legal system. And so ironically, even though China has accused Canada and the United States of violating the rule of law and making this entirely political, our hands are actually tied because of the rule of law system that we're uh, abiding, abiding by. Um, so I think uh, the question is, can we let that process go forward. If we um, d abandon that process, it does, it's not relevant just for this single case. It's relevant for rule of law more generally, and that's most important when you're dealing with highly sensitive cases like oh, this. Let's finish on this. Canada, as we've talked about, it's pay we're, we're paying a price here in this country for standing by uh, the obligations, uh, and that's the way they are, that's the way to frame it, of the extradition treaty with the United States. Uh, any sense, any appreciation in the Trump administration of, of, of Canada's position on this? And uh, we're, we're looking to diversify our economy, partly by increasing trade with China, but is that uh, going to be increasingly difficult in this kind of climate? Sure. Um, I, I understand uh, Canada, Canadians are to be commended for, for, for standing up for rule of law. In particular, uh, Michael Kovrig, Michael Spavor, who are being held in detention essentially as hostages in this specific case, um, really uh, quite alarming. Um, I think it's totally understandable, totally makes sense that Canada and others want to have as deep economic ties with China as possible. They're mutually complementary. And same for the United States. It's actually, on balance, led to an increase in jobs, business opportunities, improved our economy as well. But I think Canada, Canadians and Americans will agree that we need to engage uh, with uh, being very realistic and trying to uphold the rules, because that's without the rules undergirding this collaboration, uh, it's going to end up being not in our interests and it's going to harm our economies. And so I think that's what the U.S. is asking for this partnership with Canada to do. Um, and so that, again, we are at a, a difficult crossroads because of this very serious disagreement, which we hope will be resolved uh, sooner rather than later. Scott Kennedy, uh, thank you so much for your perspective today. Good to talk to you and I uh, hope we get a chance to talk again soon. Sure, happy to.